Greetings, everyone. This is Sam from Historic Travels, wishing all of you a good day. Now guys, over the course of the history of this YouTube channel, we have spent a lot of time discussing the Olympic class liners and the vital role that these vessels played throughout maritime history. Now, in case you're not familiar, the Olympic class liners include the Olympic, the Titanic, and the Britannic. And because all three of these vessels are part of the same class of liner, these vessels are referred to as sister ships. However, would it surprise all of you if I was to tell you that there were in fact two other vessels that while they weren't directly part of the Olympic class, these vessels were built as a direct result of the Olympic class, and these two ships would play a vital role in allowing the Olympic class to do their job. So because these vessels were built for the Olympic class, these ships are sometimes referred to as the Olympic class's little sister ships. However, despite the fact that these vessels played such a vital role in the Olympic class history, their story has been mostly forgotten. And this is surprising considering that one of these two ships is currently the last White Star Line ship still in existence today. So what I thought I would do in today's video is correct that problem and tell all of you watching this video the story of these two very fascinating liners. So join me today as we tell the story of the White Star Line ships Nomadic and Traffic. I hope you enjoy. <music> This episode of Historic Travels is brought to you by Yesel. Yesel makes amazing quality exercise bikes and other forms of home exercise equipment. Now Yesel was kind enough to send me one of their exercise bikes for review. If you would like to watch that video, I will include a link to that video in the description below. And if you would like to purchase one of these bikes for yourself, please go to the website and use the promo code Historic Travels to get 10% off your order. Now the story of the Nomadic and the Traffic actually began many years before the vessels were even built. But before I can tell you their story, we first need to talk about a city located within the country of France. This city is called Cherbourg. You see, at the start of the 20th century, the city of Cherbourg was on the verge of becoming a major stopover port for both German and British ships that were going to be making the transatlantic crossing between Europe and the United States of America. Now, when this eventually came to pass, the city of Cherbourg saw a massive economic boom. There were so many people coming in and out of Cherbourg to take these massive vessels across the Atlantic to America. Now, in the year 1907, the White Star Line finally decided to start making regular stops in Cherbourg. And in the year 1909, the city actually constructed a brand new ferry terminal to handle the increased load of people that were coming in and out of Cherbourg to board these massive transatlantic liners. Now, the reason why the city of Cherbourg needed a ferry terminal, well, this reveals one of the biggest problems the city was dealing with in regards to servicing these massive ocean liners. You see, the harbor outside of Cherbourg, where the ships would come in and out of the city, well, the water in the harbor was too shallow for big vessels to come all the way up to the dock to pick up passengers. So what the city had to do to deal with this issue was use small tender boats to ferry people from the city of Cherbourg out into the harbor where massive ocean liners were waiting to pick up their passengers. Now, not long after the White Star Line decided to start making regular stops in Cherbourg, the company then decided to start working on their biggest and most revolutionary ocean liners to date, the Olympic class ocean liners. The first ship of the class, the RMS Olympic, well, her keel was laid down just one year after the White Star Line decided to start making regular stops in Cherbourg. Now, the White Star Line had big visions for the Olympic class. They wanted their ships to be the most ideal way for people to cross the Atlantic. These ships weren't meant to be the fastest ships in the world, like the Canard Lines, Lusitania, and Mauritania that had recently entered service. These ships were designed to be the most luxurious and most relaxing way for people to cross the Atlantic. And they wanted people to feel this way throughout every single part of the journey, even the part when they're first boarding the vessels. Now, because the White Star Line wanted people to feel like this, well, there was a problem that they had to deal with whenever people would board the ships in Cherbourg, the tendering process. You see, up to this point, the White Star Line had relied on an old tender boat known as the SS Gallic to get people from Cherbourg out into the harbor where they could board their ships. But they really weren't happy with this vessel. They wanted the tendering process to be seen as part of the journey and, you know, a relaxing and fun way to start your voyage. 
They didn't want it to just be something that people had to deal with before their actual fun adventure and journey began on the Olympic class ships. So, not long after construction on the Olympic class started, the White Star Line planned to build two brand new tender ships that would operate in Cherbourg to bring people from the city out to the Olympic class liners. Now, even though the White Star Line decided that they would need these two tender boats to service the Olympic class, it would still be a couple of years before they started working on the vessels. You see, the same shipyard that was building the Olympic class, the shipyard of Harland and Wolf in Belfast, Ireland, would also be responsible for building these two brand new tender ships. But now the White Star Line had an issue they needed to figure out. Who was going to design these two brand new revolutionary tender ships? Well, they ultimately decided to pick a man who was already responsible for helping design the Olympic class liners, Thomas Andrews. Yes, Thomas Andrews would be in charge of designing these two brand new ships. Now, eventually, these two vessels would be named the Nomadic and the Traffic. And these two tender boats, well, each one was going to be used to service a certain set of passengers on the Olympic class liners. The Nomadic was going to be used to tender both first and second class passengers to the ship, while the Traffic was going to be responsible for just servicing third class passengers. Now, construction on the Nomadic and the Traffic would officially begin on December 22, 1910. However, by that time, the RMS Olympic had already been launched and was undergoing her fitting out process. And her sister ship, RMS Titanic, well, her launch was only a few months away. Now, when construction on these two tender boats began, the White Star Line wanted them to be ready for the Olympics maiden voyage, which was due to occur in June of 1911. Now, I don't have to tell you that from December 22nd to June 1911, well, that's not a large amount of time to build a vessel, even a tender one. So the shipyard of Harland and Wolf would really have to move if they wanted to have any shot of getting the nomadic and the traffic completed in time for the Olympics maiden voyage. Construction on both vessels proceeded at a rapid rate, and Thomas Andrews was heavily involved in the entire construction process of the nomadic and the traffic. Then, as time went by and the vessels began to take shape, the true vision of what Thomas Andrews had in mind for the nomadic and traffic soon came to light. Thomas Andrews' goal for these two ships was to make them essentially smaller white star line ships. He wanted them to look and operate very similar to a massive white star line ocean liner, just smaller. And honestly, I think his vision came to light. The two tender ships were beautifully built. Their interiors matched what was going to be in the Olympic class liners and Honestly, I can't imagine a better way to start a journey on a White Star Line ship than on board either the Nomadic or the Traffic. Then, thanks to all of the hard work and determination that everyone in the shipyard of Harland and Wolf put into building the Nomadic and the Traffic, both vessels were completed in a record-breaking short amount of time. On May 27th, 1911, both vessels were completed and ready to go. Now guys, I want you to think about something for a second here. Both the Nomadic and Traffic, well, their construction began on December 22nd, 1910, and construction was completed on the 27th of May, 1911. What is that? Just a little over five months? I mean, I cannot believe that they were able to build both of these tender ships in such a short amount of time. I mean, granted, building a tender ship is nowhere near as involved as building a massive ocean liner like the Olympic or Titanic, but still, it's an amazing accomplishment. Now, the White Star Line was planning to send the Nomadic and Traffic to the city of Cherbourg right after the Olympic left Harland and Wolf to go get ready for her maiden voyage, which was due to happen on May 31st, 1911. Now, there was something else pretty big happening in the shipyard of Harland and Wolf on May 31st, 1911. The RMS Titanic, I'm pretty sure you all have heard of her. Well, anyway, her hull had just finished being built and the ship was ready to slide down the slipway and go into the water. This is also called the launching of Titanic. So I want you to think about this for a second. The Olympic was going to leave Harland and Wolf on May 31st, 1911. The Nomadic and Traffic were going to leave Harland and Wolf on May 31st, 1911. And the Titanic was going to be launched on May 31st, 1911. Boy, I tell you, May 31st, 1911, that was definitely a big day for the White Star Line and the shipyard of Harland and Wolf.
Then, following the successful launch of the brand new RMS Titanic, the RMS Olympic steamed out of the shipyard of Harland and Wolf, bound for the city of Liverpool where she would spend 24 hours. Then, right after that, she would head to the city of Southampton to begin preparations for her maiden voyage. Trailing closely behind the Olympic were the two White Star Line tender ships, Nomadic and Traffic. These vessels were already bound for the city of Cherbourg, where they would be patiently waiting for the brand new RMS Olympic to arrive. Now the voyage to the city of Cherbourg went without incident for both the nomadic and traffic. Cruising at their maximum speed of 12 knots, both vessels successfully arrived in the city on June 3, 1911. Once both vessels arrived, there really wasn't that much to do with the nomadic and traffic, except to just, you know, clean them, make sure they were ship shape and everything. And then the crew simply just stood by and waited for the brand new RMS Olympic to arrive. And arrived it did. On June 14th, 1911, that's the day that the Olympic began her maiden voyage, both the nomadic and traffic were ready to go and they were ready to serve the ship. When the Olympic pulled into the harbor on schedule, the nomadic and traffic wasted no time in tendering people from the city of Cherbourg out to the brand new RMS Olympic, which was waiting in the harbor. Now, as far as how the nomadic and traffic performed on their first official duty as tender ships, well, the nomadic performed flawlessly. However, the same can't be said for the traffic. While the traffic had no issues with delivering passengers to the Olympic, there was some issues on the crew's part in handling the mail and cargo that the traffic was bringing to the ship. Bruce Ismay, the head of the White Star Line, was not happy with this and asked the crew to improve their operations by the next time the Olympic came into the city. And improved it they did. By the next time the Olympic pulled into Cherbourg, the crew had resolved the issues and both the nomadic and traffic would perform flawlessly for the foreseeable future. The next major event for both the nomadic and traffic happened on April 10th, 1912, more specifically in the evening of that day. At this time, the RMS Titanic, sister ship to the RMS Olympic, steamed into Cherbourg, France for the first time on her maiden voyage. Now, just like they had done with the Olympic before her, the nomadic and traffic wasted no time in tendering passengers and cargo out to the waiting Titanic. As the two little tender ships pulled up to the Titanic, on the Titanic's deck, the man who had designed both the nomadic and traffic, Thomas Andrews, who was accompanying the Titanic on her maiden voyage, was observing the performance of the two little tender ships. He was very pleased with how the little boats performed, and later he wrote to his wife that the two little tenders looked very well, and he also reminded her that they built them only a year before. Now, after the Titanic finished picking up its passengers and cargo from Cherbourg, the ship steamed out of Cherbourg, France a couple of hours later to continue her maiden voyage. And as I'm sure many of you watching this video already know, this would be the only time the Titanic would visit Cherbourg, France. Now, it's important to note that even though the Nomadic and the Traffic were built to service the Olympic class liners, they didn't offer their services exclusively to the Olympic and recently completed Titanic. They actually offered tendering services to any White Star Line ship that came into Cherbourg. Now, the day after the Titanic left Cherbourg, another famous White Star Line ocean liner, the RMS Adriatic, and yes, this is the same Adriatic that was part of the fleet of ships known as the Big Four, came into Cherbourg. You see, the Adriatic, just like Titanic, was getting ready to complete a transatlantic voyage from Europe to New York City. So it came into Cherbourg to pick up passengers and cargo, and just like what they did for Titanic, the Nomadic and Traffic offered tendering services to the Adriatic. Now the reason why the Adriatic coming into Cherbourg is historically significant is because even though they didn't know it at the time, the Adriatic would soon play a big role following the Titanic disaster, which was going to occur just a few days from now. You see, after the Titanic survivors reached New York City on board the Carpathia, the Adriatic would be responsible for bringing a good number of the Titanic survivors back home to Europe following the disaster. Following the Titanic disaster, life was pretty uneventful for the nomadic and traffic for the next few years. Both vessels continued to operate normally servicing White Star Line ships and there being no major incidents to speak of. However, all that changed after the outbreak of World War I. After the war started, both the nomadic and traffic were requisitioned by the French government, and they saw use for a time as auxiliary minesweeper ships. Both vessels were also used to ferry American soldiers to land in the city of Brest, located in France, during the war. After the war was over, the nomadic and traffic returned to Cherbourg, where they began their original duty of tendering to White Star Line ships once again. Following the end of World War I, life was pretty much routine for the nomadic and traffic for nearly the next 10 years. Both vessels remained in Cherbourg and they continued servicing White Star Line ships. However, in the year 1927, the White Star Line decided that they no longer needed the two tenders and put both vessels up for sale. 
Now, ultimately, the Nomadic and the Traffic were sold to separate companies, and I did find the companies that bought the both vessels, but I'm not even gonna try to pronounce them here on camera for you guys. Like, I found the company name, I typed it into Google Translate, and the way it said you pronounce the words, I was just like, uh, yeah, I'm not even gonna try to do that. So what I'm gonna do instead is here at the bottom of the screen, I'm just gonna put the names of the nomadic and traffic below, and then I'm gonna put the name of the company that bought them right beside them. So there you go. That's the companies that bought the nomadic and the traffic. Now, from what I could tell, and this is kind of hard for me to figure out because information on the nomadic and traffic's activities immediately following this sell is kind of hit or miss. I believe that both vessels, even though they were owned by separate companies, remain together and continue to offer tender services in Cherbourg. However, unlike what they did when they were with the White Star Line where they only serviced White Star Line vessels, now the Nomadic and Traffic would offer tendering services to any vessel that came into the city, not just White Star Line ships. Now for the next couple of years, life was pretty uneventful for the Nomadic and Traffic. However, all that would change on June 5th, 1929. You see, on this date, the traffic was involved in a collision with a large vessel known as the RMS Homerick. The traffic's bow suffered extensive damage on the starboard side and needed to be repaired. Now, an inquiry was held to investigate the collision, and it was ultimately concluded that the traffic was a very difficult vessel to control. In October of 1929, they installed new propellers on the traffic in hopes of solving this problem. However, it didn't. In December of the same year, the traffic was involved in another collision, this time with a vessel known as the Mini Waska, and the vessel had to be repaired once again. Now, ironically enough, just two years later, in 1931, the traffic sister ship, the Nomadic, would be involved in a collision. And guess what ship the Nomadic hit? the exact same ship that the traffic hit two years before, the Mini Waska. And the Nomadic, just like what happened to the traffic, had to go back into the harbor to get repaired. Life continued on as usual for the Nomadic and traffic for the next couple of years. However, on July 30th, 1933, something would happen that would ultimately change the fate of the two tenders forever. On this date, the city of Cherbourg had just completed work on its brand new harbor. And this new harbor was revolutionary for the city of Cherbourg because it now allowed big ocean liners to be able to pull all the way up to the dock to pick up and drop off their passengers and cargo. So because of this, tender ships like the Nomadic and Traffic were no longer necessary and both vessels were ultimately put up for sale. Both ships were bought by the same company and just like what I did before, I'm gonna put the name of that company right down here at the bottom of the video. And this company also renamed both vessels. I'll also show both vessels' new names down here at the bottom of the screen. Now, for the sake of convenience, and that way I don't confuse anyone, even though both vessels are known by different names at this point in time, I'm still just going to refer to them as nomadic and traffic, just so it's easier for us to keep track of what both vessels are doing. Now, following this sale, I wasn't able to find any direct information as to what exactly the Nomadic and Traffic did throughout the rest of the 1930s. It's quite possible that the company that bought them was considering scrapping the two little tenders because they were no longer needed in Cherbourg Harbor. But until then, my best guess is that the Nomadic and Traffic just basically sat in Cherbourg Harbor, laid up, waiting for some use if a, if a need ever came up for them. The next confirmed reports I have for the Nomadic and Traffic happened after the outbreak of World War II. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna first tell you exclusively what happened to the traffic after World War II started. Then we're gonna jump and talk about the nomadic. And the reason I'm going to do it this way is, well, let's just say one of these two vessels has a very sad fate as a result of the Second World War. Following the outbreak of World War II, the French government requisitioned the traffic and began using the vessel as a mine layer. However, as the Nazi army was continuing to advance through France, it didn't take the French government very long to realize that the country was going to fall to the Nazis and that they would soon be in the city of Cherbourg. So instead of allowing the traffic to become part of the Nazis' navy, they decided to scuttle the ship in Cherbourg Harbor to keep it out of their hands. However, this attempt would soon prove to be futile because after the Nazis took Cherbourg, they raised the traffic and began using it as a coastal patroller ship. Yes, you heard me right. The Nazis went through the trouble of raising the traffic and were now using this important piece of British maritime history against the Allies. I mean, I can't even imagine it. It makes me so angry. However, the following year, the British Navy was successful in torpedoing the traffic and they did successfully sink the vessel. Now, believe it or not, once again, the Nazis went through the trouble of raising the traffic and they wanted to try to use it again as a patrol ship. 
However, after they raised it and got it back into Cherbourg, they determined that the vessel was too badly damaged for use, so they decided to scrap the vessel in the city of Cherbourg. However, the nomadic would have a very different fate than her sister ship traffic. When Cherbourg was being evacuated on June 18, 1940, the nomadic participated in the evacuation and successfully evacuated a good number of people from France and got them successfully over to England where they would be safe from the Nazis. However, this ultimately begs a question. If the nomadic was used in the evacuation, then why wasn't the traffic, you know? Because it makes sense to me that if you want to protect both ships from the Nazis, then just have both of them go to England where they would be safe. I honestly have no idea why the nomadic was used in the evacuation, but the French government decided to scuttle the traffic. Maybe the ship had engine trouble or something. I honestly have no idea. If any of you out there knows why the French government decided to scuttle the traffic, please let me know in the comments below. I would really like to hear it. Following the nomadic's successful evacuation from Cherbourg, the vessel would spend the rest of the war safely protected within the country of England. More specifically, the nomadic would stay in Portsmouth Harbor, and the Royal Navy would use the nomadic as an accommodation ship throughout the rest of the war. Now, when World War II ended, it was ultimately decided that the nomadic was going to be taken to the shipbreaker yard and broken up. However, fortunately for the nomadic, fate would step in and ultimately save the vessel from the scrapyard. After World War II ended, the city of Cherbourg, along with her harbor, had been badly damaged. And as a result of this, big vessels could no longer pull all the way up to the dock in Cherbourg. So as a result of this, tendering ships were once again needed within the city. So the nomadic was saved from the scrapyard and resumed her original role as a tender ship. She would do this for the next couple of decades, serving some of the most famous ships at the time, including the Queen Mary and the Queen Elizabeth. The nomadic performed perfectly for the next several years until she was ultimately retired from her role as a tender ship on November 4th, 1968. Following the retirement of the nomadic, the vessel remained in Cherbourg for a short period of time until ultimately being moved to Le Harve, France in April of 1969. Now, the nomadic would remain idle for the next five years until ultimately everyone was considering scrapping the nomadic once again. However, before the vessel was scrapped, a private individual by the name of Yvon Vincent spotted the nomadic and he ultimately purchased and saved the vessel. You see, Yvonne Vincent was a bit of a maritime historian, and he knew the historical significance of the nomadic, and he did not want to see it destroyed. Yvonne Vincent changed the vessel's name back to nomadic, and his vision for the ship was to use it as a floating restaurant. So what he ultimately did was he did some restoration work to the nomadic and moved the vessel to Paris, where it served as a floating restaurant for the next several decades. However, in 1999, Yvonne Vincent's business went bankrupt, and the Nomadic was seized by the French Port Authorities in 2002. Once they did this, they towed the Nomadic back to Le Harve. However, in order to get the Nomadic back to Le Harve, they had to remove some of the Nomadic superstructure so they could tow the vessel out of Paris. Upon the Nomadic's return to Le Harve, the vessel once again remained idle for the next couple of years. And then, in the year 2005, the French government decided that they were either going to sell or scrap the Nomadic. Now, unfortunately, no buyers came to light, and the Nomadic's fate looked all but sealed. However, news of what was going on with the Nomadic reached many maritime historical groups that were in the area, and all of them banded together to try to save the Nomadic. Some of these groups include of the following. French Titanic Society, the Belfast Industrial Heritage, the Belfast Titanic Society, and a new group was formed called Save the Nomadic. However, despite all of the efforts that all of these groups did, they were unable to get the money needed to buy the Nomadic. The French government wanted 250,000 euros to purchase the vessel. However, all of the activity that all these groups did, did gain the attention of Northern Ireland's government. So ultimately, Northern Ireland's government decided to purchase the Nomadic for the shocking price of 250,001 euros. Following the successful purchasing of the Nomadic, the vessel was then returned to Belfast, Ireland in July of 2006. Now, I'm not 100% certain about this, but I do believe this was the Nomadic's first time back to Belfast since she was originally built nearly 100 years prior. It's pretty crazy if you ask me. Now, it's also important to note that the vessel did not make this return journey free-floating. They actually had to bring the Nomadic home on a marine transportation barge. Once the Nomadic was safely back in Belfast, what everyone wanted to do with the vessel was restore her to the way she was back when she was first built in 1911, and they ultimately wanted to open the ship up to the public as a museum ship. 
You see, they wanted people to be able to board the Nomadic and see what life was like on this historic vessel nearly 100 years prior. That's a great cause if you ask me. Now, the Nomadic Charitable Trust was created to take ownership of the vessel and oversee its restoration. And restoring the ship took quite a few years, mostly because they had issues getting the funding they needed to restore the ship. However, in the year 2013, the Nomadic was completely restored and opened to the public for the first time. And as you can see from these pictures, the vessel looks absolutely beautiful. She looks just like she did back in 1911. And honestly, I am completely blown away by the incredible work that everyone who restored the Nomadic did for her. The next big event to happen to the Nomadic happened in April of 2015, when ownership of the vessel was officially transferred to the Titanic Foundation. Now, to this day, the Nomadic continues to serve the purpose that those who bought her and returned her to Belfast originally intended for her. She is currently a museum ship, and she is part of the Titanic Museum located in Belfast, Ireland. Anybody who purchases a ticket to the Belfast Titanic Museum automatically gets a ticket to go and see the Nomadic. And honestly, guys, on a personal note, I can't tell you how happy it makes me that this iconic White Star Line ship was saved from the shipbreaker yards. She was restored to her former glory and is currently serving as a museum ship. So that means that anyone who visits the Titanic Museum in Belfast can go and tour this iconic vessel and see what life was like for everybody who sailed on her nearly 100 years ago. And I can't help but imagine that Thomas Andrews would be completely thrilled by this as well. I mean, to think that one of his creations, and it's also the last White Star Line ship in existence, I mean, honestly, it's incredible. But anyway, guys, that now concludes the story of the SS Nomadic and her sister ship, SS Traffic. If you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave this video a like. And if you're new here, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys. It really helps out a lot. And I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next official Historic Travels video. Y'all take care. I would also like to take a moment to thank my friend on Discord, SpaceKiller555, for creating this incredible animation of the SS Nomadic that you have seen throughout this entire video. Thank you so much for all your work, man. It's incredible. Special thanks to my Captain Level Patreon supporter, Tammy Lee. Thank you so much for all the support. Mm -hmm.